Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Hope everybody's enjoying the international break. Hope everybody's enjoying the peace away from Chelsea Football Club um, and the various things that we've been arguing about over the last few months. But the media aren't letting us rest. The media really aren't letting us rest because there's more scaremongering. There's more BS rumors that we need to try and decipher through. Even during jury duty, you have to deal with this BS. But we will talk about it because apparently we're in financial trouble. Again, again, we're in this situation again. The finance ex experts are back out. Um, all, all the astrologers are back out. All the people who can look into the future and, and have already decided that Chelsea are in trouble. They're all back out talking about how Chelsea are heading towards a bigger points deduction. I saw so much BS going through the timeline. I saw this. Manchester City and Chelsea risk exclusion from the Premier League for financial fair play violations, even though we haven't been charged with anything just yet. Talk sport as well. It's a real possibility. Chelsea on the brink of being handed a severe Premier League punishment. Again, we haven't been charged with a single thing, but there's a chance. There's a chance. There's there's a real chance. Uh, we, we've dealt with this crap for, act for years. Literally two different ownerships, and we've had to deal with this scaremongering. Now it's just easier to do it because we're washed as a football club and we're sitting in mid-table. So any articles about Chelsea that are negative that are negatively based and everything like that will easily generate more clicks because it fits the narrative because we also played that narrative we're in 11th place but all this is is yet again more scaremongering and more attempts to try and read into the future with the claims that we're not going to make any money in the summer at all or any money before June I even looked through this article and it's basically saying that Chelsea need to make a hundred to two million pounds of sales or profit um, by the end of June, and the the one thing I will say is that we can't read into the future. And like maybe worst case scenario, we don't. But are we going to pretend it's a foregone conclusion? Are we going to pretend that it's only just pure profit sales that we need to try to make in order to generate money? Like this whole idea that we're already a few steps back is only based off the fact that we might not make it into Europe. And there was already articles saying that if we make it into the Conference League, we might forego it because the amount that you spend throughout the competition isn't even worth the payout. And we would be in a loss if we stayed in that competition. We spoke about it on stream a few weeks ago. So we, we have an idea of where we are financially, first of all. Or we have a better idea than all of these wafflers who are trying to talk about where Chelsea is. None of them know our accounts. None of them know our accounts right now. None of them know our accounts or what they will be in June. Like, there are a bunch of different factors that come into this. And a lot of them, the cards just haven't even been played yet. Like, for example, Lewis Hall, he's already leaving. I think the clause to make his transfer, per well, his loan move permanent was for Newcastle to just finish above 15th. There were sources saying that in the last week or so. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section. But that's one. That's 35 million in the bank. Ian Matson, 35 million release clause. He's set to go. You've got Broya, who you could probably get. You're not going to get 50 million for him. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. But you could get about 30. 30, may maybe 25 on a bad day. But... That's pure profit on the books. You could get Chalaba. Chalaba, we've been trying to get rid of for the last 18 months now. Gallagher, we already know this situation's been dragging on and on, and he's likely leaving as much as the Gallagher stands hate to hear it. I, I don't think the brother's staying. And it is what it is. I'm going to drop a video on the Gallagher situation tomorrow, but that is just one small factor of all the potential profits that could be coming in. We've got a new shirt sleeve sponsor. The one that they haven't decided to talk about in Bing X for 40 million. We will get new shirt sponsors next summer. And we've already brought in 40 million for Infinite Athlete this year. And we're going to get another 40 million from them next year because they're going to become our sleeve sponsors. Then you take into account TV money, um, reward money for where you place in the Premier League, which probably won't be too much from 11th place. But that's going to come into this as well. 
um, TV money from the Premier League, prize money for making it to the Carabao Cup final, and let's see what we do with the FA Cup. Then you got Lukaku, hopefully off the books. Let's hope we get Kepa off the books. Thiago Silva, if he leaves, his wages are off the books. I think even Ziyech comes into it as well. Like There's a bunch of different variables when it comes to Chelsea trying to make money. Or if anything, we could even get more sponsors within the next couple of months. We don't know, which is why we shouldn't be doing this BS scaremongering. But like it's the English media, so imagine my shock. Imagine my shock. Plus, it's also the international break, and it's a massively slow, slow two weeks in terms of news, which is why I picked my jury duty for the international break, because I knew I weren't missing too much. This, this is what they bring to my table. Yet again, more BS, more scaremongering about, oh, Chelsea, Chelsea are going to get sanctioned. We're going to get relegated. The sanctions are probably a bigger reason why it's so easy to write this clickbait about us, because... It's not like well, I won't even say we've kept our noses clean. It's not like we've been out we've been out of trouble for years. There's always been some chaos following our football club. So it's just easy to write BS about us. But again, all this is is scaremongering about Chelsea and can they sell a hundred million pounds of players? Like can we like I know these owners haven't been here for, for a while, but can we at least look at the track record? How many players did we get rid of before June? I mean, before the end of June. We we had five, six players all transferred on the same day. We had Havertz go to Arsenal. We had um, Kovacic, Mendy, Koulibaly. I think the ZH one was a loan, so we'll say four transfers and a loan. But that was only just a couple. Um, I think there was a few other names too. But the fact is we can get players out before June the 30th. The only real question mark might be Gallagher because there's rumours Gareth Southgate won't allow um, players to go through transfer negotiations during the Euro. So that leaves a very short window to get him gone if we do get to that conclusion with him. And we want to get it done before the end of June. So that's going to be a bit of a sticky situation. But everything else you could probably handle. There's, not, there's no problems with that with Holland from what we've heard. So Matson, if... A club activates his release clause, or if Dortmund do it, he can go. Broya, just probably whoever wants him at this point. Chalaba, same energy, but big up. Lewis Hall's basically already left. I don't even need to go anywhere. Then you look at all the sponsorship deals, all the potential new ones too. Who knows how much that new shirt sponsorship deal is going to cost? And who knows when that's going to be announced? That could be announced in the next week. Before we know we could get confirmation on a new shirt sponsor. So don't listen to the media tr trying to make Chelsea look even more of a mess than it already is because like we don't need to lie about Chelsea to make us look bad. We are literally 11th in the table. We have one of the worst managers in the league in charge. Like it's not hard. We don't need to talk out of our bum holes about this football club. But hey, it's not going to stop the media doing it anyway. I wonder what we're going to talk about next. So we're going to talk about Chelsea's um, yellow card record or something. We're going to talk about us being bottle jobs again. I don't know, but whatever it is, we'll be here to decipher through that BS and we'll be here to at least try and calm people down, I guess. But yeah, big up to everybody that's locked in. It's been good to be back again on the videos. Let me know what you guys are saying down in the comment section below. Um, I need to try and get some sleep before football because like, I, I don't get a lot of sleep with this sleeping pattern. I'm not used to waking up early. I'm not used to waking up early, people. But hey, another 10 days and then we're done. We're done with this BS and then we can go right back to the live streams. I might I might run a live stream in the weekend or something. I might do a little Q&A or something. I don't know. Let me know what you guys want to see as well. Um. I might bring back the career mode, or who the hell wants to see the career mode? Let's be real. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Who knows? We might actually have a legit topic to talk about. We might not just have to be trying to um, just talk through all this BS. But yeah, big up to everybody that's locked in. Like, subscribe, all of that. Let's get to 500 likes. And yeah, big up, everybody. Potch out. And as always, up the Chelsea.